Welcome to this video. This video explains INP files in Abaco software. Some features of Abaco software are not available in the graphical user interface, so we need to create, modify, and use INP files. In this video an example of dealing with a simple INP file is illustrated. This video includes four parts. How to create INP files. Understanding INP files. How to change INP files. How to use INP files. To create a simple INP file, at first we are going to create a simple CAE model. This model contains a rectangular column which is subjected to pressure on the top, and fixed in the bottom. After creating the part, we define the material and assign it to the model. Then we insert the part to the assembly module. We create a static step. We modify the time incrementation to find our settings in the INP file. The bottom surface of the model is fixed in Y direction. and the pressure is applied on the top surface. We use quadrilateral and structural mesh for the model. To create a short INP file we use only 6 elements to mesh the model. The name of the job is important because it will be the name of the INP file. If we submit the job the software will create the INP file in the work directory. We can also click on the right input icon and create the INP file without submitting the job. Now we can find the INP file in the work directory. An INP file consists of three types of lines. Lines which start with two star are comments or descriptions. Command lines start with one star and lines without any star are data lines. In the INP file, the geometry of the model is defined by nodes and elements. At first, nodes coordinates are defined. Each line shows the number of node and its coordinate. Then the elements are defined. Each line shows the number of element and its nodes numbers. Set 1 includes all the nodes from 1 to 12, 1 by 1. This set also includes all the elements from 1 to 6, 1 by 1. These lines assign the section to set 1 which includes the whole part. Then the assembly is created by the part. The next set includes three nodes of the bottom face, from 1 to 3 1 by 1. Surf 1 indicates the top surface of the model. It includes elements 5 and 6. These lines define the material. These lines create a static step. We can find the name of step, maximum number of increments, minimum and maximum size of increments, and time period in these lines. In the boundary condition Y symmetry is applied to set 1. Then the pressure is applied to the top surface in the load. 
The rest of the file is related to the requesting of the outputs. At first field outputs and then history outputs. Here, all the outputs are defaults of the software as you can see that pre-select option is active. Please note that you can find any required keywords for changing the commands in the software help. In this part we are going to modify the INP file to create a model with 8 elements. At first we add 3 extra nodes to the INP file, 13, 14, and 15. The X coordinates of nodes are similar to previous rows, but the Y coordinate is 8. Then we add two elements, 7 and 8, and their nodes numbers to the file. Set 1 should include all the nodes and elements to assign the section to them. So it should be modified as from node 1 to 15 1 by 1, and from element 1 to 8 1 by 1. The next set defines nodes in the bottom surface including 1 2 and 3. These nodes belongs to elements 1 and 2 and they are fixed. This set does not require any change. These line define the top surface of the column to apply pressure to it. This surface now belongs to the top elements which are 7 and 8. No more modification is required and we could save the file and use it. There are two methods to use an INP file. First, we can import the file to the software through File, Import, and Model. Please note that the file format needs to be chosen as INP. In this method we can see details of the model like materials, loads, and steps. Then we can create a job and run the model. Second, we can create a job directly based on the INP file and run it. You can find an example of using INP files in Abaqua software to apply non-symmetric loads to axisymmetric model in the next video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe our channel to watch more videos. If you have any question, let me know in comment section below. We will answer your questions as soon as possible.